Great topic clusters that talk to each other with Marit Rutelingsberger from Mob Digital. Brought to you by Majestic, I'm David Bain and this is SEO in 2022. Marit, what is your number one SEO tip for 2022? My SEO tip for 2022 is uh, something that I talk about quite a lot uh, and that I see happening more and more, which is creating topic clusters uh, which are useful for the people visiting your website and making sure they talk to each other. I talked about topic clusters with Joe Juliana Turnbull. How do you Mm -hmm. define topic clusters? So to me, topic clusters are quite a loaded term. You know, it's it's a lot of jargon. It's something that in digital marketing or SEO in particular, we like to throw around. Um, But all it really means is creating content that's useful for your potential buyers, for the people who are visiting your website um, and categorizing that in a way that makes it easy for search engines to understand that these different articles are linked. Okay. And what's the optimum way of forming a topic cluster would you recommend having a long authoritative piece of content about a particular topic and then having lots of smaller articles about sub topics pointing to that larger one yes so that is absolutely the traditional the traditional way of creating uh, a topic cluster is having that big uh, evergreen long form page that is um about the overall topic, which brings together a lot of the information and links out to many of the different articles that then go into more detail about this topic. Um, Something that I find is that people get a bit confused with topic clusters. They feel like it needs to be this whole strategy and a big thought out plan. But most companies that have done keyword research have essentially already created some of their topic clusters by categorizing keywords into different tabs. One of the challenges, I guess, with selecting the topic cluster that you really focus on is that um, you can only do so much at the same time or perhaps just one topic cluster at the same time and you've perhaps identified hundreds of different topic areas that you could write about. How how do you define the most appropriate, um, perhaps, um, highest reward bringing topic cluster that you could be writing about? Sure. So I think actually um, part of that will come back to uh, to keyword research, Um, you know, seeing whether there is a lot of search volume for the particular overall topic that you want to that you want to share with. Um, But something that can also really help is understanding whether there is a lot of competition, whether there are a lot of other companies writing about the topic. Um, Because even if search volume is lower, if it is relevant to your audience, then actually that is more important, in my opinion. And how do you define that relevance? Is that just a case of um, eyeballing the terms yourself and deciding internally that that's relevant or more relevant for the type of audience that I want to target? Or is is there a more um, automated way to, to do that work? I mean, there is there's definitely ways of of automating, but that is for me, it is that part of knowing the business that you're working with or knowing the business that you're working for uh, and understanding what the goal of the company is. If the if the goal of the company is selling red shoes, then you can write all about tea as much as you like, but it's not going to help you (laughs) sell red shoes. Um, and so, yeah, I think knowing the company will really help you understand what information they want to share. Uh, keyword research can help focus your mind on what types of content people are looking for. Um, and when I say keyword research, I kind of secretly also include things like making sure that you use websites like also asked or um, answer the public to re- to actually really find the topics that people are looking for and how do you find the topics that people are going to look for because when you're working in certain industries you need to predict what keywords are more likely to be a success in or um, 
more highly searched in six months time or so um, rather than actually just now if you're planning for the future so is it possible to find that information? Um, I think it is um, it, de- it sort of depends on what you mean with the question if we're talking about season seasonality for example then that is definitely trackable using Google Trends for example or seeing how certain pages on your website have performed in the past Okay, yeah, it certainly could be seasonality. It could be the releases of, of products that, uh, that are relatively new um, to a sector that, 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 that perhaps haven't existed yet. Um, and I guess mm-hmm. another way would be um, knowing about um, new versions of uh, products that are yet to c- come that have different serial numbers that have been released and you kind of know that it's going to be successful t- t- at some point in the future. Um, w- w- one other thing that you touched upon was that um, you wanted to make topic clusters that talk to each other. Um, so, so what's yes. that, that, that all about? We, we've talked about, you know, keyword research, we've talked about topic clusters and often people portray topic clusters as this big, big, a page in the middle and then lots of sub pages, articles, FAQs, blogs around it. Um, one thing that I always try to do in first instance is making sure that it's not just a spider web of that big topic linking out to all these separate articles. We also want to link in between the articles where relevant. Um, so if you have three different articles about um, uh, trainers, So whether you have an article about best trainers for on the road, um, my trainers are not giving me the support I need anymore for running and um, best places for running off road, for example, they will all sit under the topic cluster of running trainers, but they can also link to each other. And when I talk about topic clusters talking to each other, that's kind of the next step. So if we take the the topic cluster of running trainers and we take a second topic cluster of um, maybe more fancy shoes, right? It's almost like a Venn diagram. Although running trainers and, and fancy shoes or shoes for a Christmas party, and um, they might not seem to have that much in common, but there might be some articles like shoes for any occasion or um, how to go from daytime to nighttime, <laughs> for example. These are yes. articles and they don't have to be that many, but they can overlap and they can link to both of the topic clusters, essentially. So that's how they're talking to each other. Understood. OK, so... <laughs> Is it possible to generalize and say something like, okay, for a new article that's Mm -hmm. published, what you want to do is you want to make sure that there's a link included to um, another article within the direct topic cluster. And you also Mm -hmm. make sure that there's at least one link that points to another relevant article on your website. Is is that the sort of rule that you would recommend? Uh, Yeah, I think what I tend to do with my clients is not necessarily every article has to link to another topic, but making sure that there are some articles in each topic cluster linking to articles in a different topic cluster, where it fits. Um, Because I'd rather it is not on every page and it's not in every article, but where it is, it makes sense. Um, and yeah, all all this does is, um, you know, creating this beautiful <laughs> internal linking structure uh, where if you have, for example, this is actually quite a good example. Um, if you have um, got a new product, then there is this existing topic cluster, which is already strong. It is already internally linking to each other having a new product in a different topic cluster just by having that infrastructure internally might help boost those new products up in rankings faster. Understood. So that's a great strategy for publishing new topic clusters, actually doing a mini audit to try to determine what other articles you have on your website that would be relevant that you can drive authority from to your your new ones as well. So is it more important then to link from the existing ones to the new ones as opposed to the other way around? If we're talking about a new product, 
then yes, because it's the existing uh, authority for each page that will help maybe rank this new product quicker. But overall, I think it is something that um, should be reviewed relatively regularly, maybe maybe every quarter, but surely every six months to make sure not just that um, the, the infrastructure keeps growing, if you will, but also just to make sure that the internal links are all still right, that you're not ending up with 404 pages or 301 redirects, for example. Okay, okay, great. And do you have any other rules about where links are located? For instance, do you actually prefer to have links further down the page so that people actually spend a little time on the article and actually scroll for a bit before they might actually click off to another page? Um, and also in terms of um, the phraseology that's used within the linking text, are you a fan of just using keyword rich links or does it not really matter nowadays? I think search engines get quite clever nowadays. Um, so I think if you can give a contextual anchor anchor text uh, so that it makes sense within the article and it makes sense to the article you are taking them to, um, then I, I'd be more concerned with the context than with the keyword, personally. Okay, okay. So d does this mean anything then for the article writers themselves um, to maintain the topic cluster, cluster to really optimize the topic cluster is it necessary mm -hmm. for you to give a content writer a lot of um a lot of information um about how you want things structured or do you generally just leave writers to it it depends <laughs> uh, so i have um some clients who are very rigorous with their briefing um, and they they use a template which is great because it's always the same and it will include things like um, the overall topic, keywords to focus on this page, and internal links to push to. The only um, danger with that strategy is that you will only ever link to already existing pages, which means that newer pages will also always be behind. And that's why regular reviews are a good idea. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a collage of um, every single SEO saying it depends, or maybe a Christmas <laughs> song of SEO is just going it depends. <laughs> it depends. I think. I think it, if we, I think we should, and I think we should do it. Like maybe there's a charity or something that we can bring everyone together on SEOs united. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So if an SEO is struggling for time, but. What you're saying about topic clusters and um, getting topic clusters more established and um, talking to each other a little bit more is resonating with them as something that they have to do. What's something that they might be doing at the moment that's probably not so good a use of their time that they probably need to stop doing in order to spend more time doing what you suggested? Well, first of all, I think they should consider doing what I suggested. <laughs> um, but yeah, when, when you are convinced... Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to come and find me. But yeah, when you are convinced that topic clusters that talk to each other are the way forward, then I think areas where you can save some time on are, for example, um, the, the well-known keyword, keyword stuffing. So where, you know, we have these extensive documents with keyword research and we try to fit all the different relevant keywords into a page. I think search engines nowadays are more than clever enough to understand that um, the semantics and understand that different phrases fall, fall into the same bucket. Great thoughts. Well, you can find Marit over at mobdigital.com. Marit, thanks so much for being a part of SEO in 2022. Thanks so much for having me. Check out the rest of the content from SEO in 2022 over at seoin2022.com.